All right, let's take a look at some speakers today. All speakers demonstrate some kind of a frequency response. Some are good and some are bad. The magnitude or volume of each frequency across the audio spectrum is what makes up the frequency response. Here we have an actual visual representation of a Yamaha Club Series speaker. Being able to visualize this can be extremely helpful when it comes time to EQ the speaker or tune the speaker. Right now this response is raw. There is no equalization on it whatsoever. What is obvious is that the frequencies across the spectrum are at different volumes from each other. This may or may not be a problem, so we will have to let the ear make that decision. However, all too often, it is the problem. The most important point I want to make here is that in order to give your mixing board the best possible starting position, we need to first start with getting this response in a proper position. It seems the industry standard is to encourage an equal energy per octave response. Basically, that means that what you put into a speaker, you should be getting the same thing back out of a speaker. What goes in comes out. Just like the saying, garbage in equals garbage out. And for the technical people, one volt in equals one volt out. When the response is all out of whack, beginner sound guys expect the mixing board to solve these issues. Sometimes the mixer can help, but it is simply not the right tool for the job. The correct tool for the job here is a parametric EQ. This is where we get the term speaker tunings. Not everyone has a parametric EQ, but many do have a graphic EQ. And for this demonstration, I will just use a basic graphic EQ. This Yamaha speaker was brought to me by a friend who wants to make his sound system the best it can be. This is a passive speaker, so it most likely requires some equalization. It has no onboard DSP like powered speakers. Today we have had an explosion in powered speakers where the manufacturer has worked out a lot of these details. So there's not much to do. That is great if you have powered speakers and this video may or may not be of value to you. For many, we have to make do with what we have. My friend does acoustic gigs and uses a very basic setup and has no interest in purchasing a top of the line sound system for thousands of dollars. Let's start equalizing this frequency response using a graphic EQ. Here's the frequency response. As you can see, there's many hills and dips across this audio spectrum right here. As you would suspect, in order to tame this down, we are going to have to place uh, EQ filters over these areas in order to smooth it out. Right here is the graphic EQ, where I've already made some cuts on the little sliders right there. And so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and engage the uh, EQ button from the bypass mode and show you what this equalized response will look like in real time. Okay, that is the equalized response of this uh, speaker. Unequalized, equalized. I hope this video was of value to you. The graphic EQ is not the best tool for this, but again, we will use what we have to to make the system better. I am confident that the mixing board has a much better starting position than the unequalized response. Check out some more of my videos coming your way soon, and be sure to check out my website at www.soundasylumlive.com.